And Lacan's critique of religion, he kind of lumps all religions together. He does call Christianity kind of the, the true religion, but he didn't mean it in a kind of in a positive sense. Um, and to understand what his critique of religion is, you got to think of his just general system, which is hard to systematize or to, uh, you know, uh, to easily summarize. Right. But I, the way I think of it, and it's the three registers, right. It's the, the Trinity of his system, um, the, the imaginary, the symbolic and the real. Right. And the way I think about it is these three registers comprise the phenomenology of the fallen world. Right. And since we're in a fallen world, when we're talking about the truth or the truth is still operative in the fallen world, but it's hidden, it's covered over. Right. Mm -hmm. And we can discern and truth can, can be discerned. Uh, but that's what leaves what has, according to Lacan, has left humanity in the predicament that that kind of we're in. Um, he'd say, Lacan would say that all human discourse, philosophy, psychology, religion, psychoanalysis, what have you, is a method to cope with the real, to engage with the real. Uh, the real is, you know, is, is in, uh, you know, so there's the three registers, right? The imaginary, uh, which is the space of images. It's the space of the ego. It's the space of power, right? It's mm -hmm. your conception of, of yourself. Uh, the symbolic is language. It's meaning. It's interpretation, right? And the real is that which cannot be incorporated into these two systems at all. It kind of ruptures into our reality. And that rupture is traumatic and produces alienation, right? From the orthodox perspective, this is the result of the fall when we, our consciousness fell uh, to an understanding of good and evil that is spiritually delimited. So we experience the world, our phenomenal world through language, right? So both of these systems are really rooted in the word, right? The, the language is where our human drama plays itself out. Um, so I think that's a, a kind of a, a good place to start. Ultimately it's coping with the real. And uh, uh, Lacan would say that Christianity covers over the real, right? The, the, the real, in my words, the real is being revealed, right? Rapidly and, and traumatically, by accelerations and revolutions in science and technology. So religion is an attempt to cover over this revelation to avoid unbearable anxiety and alienation for the sake of the ego. That is Lacan's critique. So it's the ego trying to mm. wall itself off from the traumatic of the real that creates these systems of thought and religion and Christianity is one of those uh, systems and one of those most potent systems. So, um, for Lacan, I think then Christianity would be situated within the imaginary. And I think there is a way to understand the imaginary in a thoroughly orthodox sense. And this is something Christos Yanaros has talked about. Um, the imaginary, at least in the context of the fall, is the idea of a non-relational or a self-relational, which is actually a term I prefer, a self-relational reality. Um, actually, just... A side note, I think Yanaris should probably replace his term uh, non-relation with self-relation and um, relation with communion, but that's just a side note. Um, I think that, um, I mean, the imaginary is um, the idea, the fiction of a non-communal reality of autonomy. This is what Yanaris says. He says that the um, choosing to uh, eat of the tree of knowledge outside of the um outside of the uh, well against the commandment of god or against the warning of god more accurately um this was man's uh man's attempt to live autonomously to live outside of god but what this introduces is a fictional reality it introduces what zizek calls the reality of the fiction so um while it is true that this is purely imaginary, the fall is, and sin itself, is a privation. It's it's imaginary. Nonetheless, it's a real fiction. It's something that persists subjectively for ourselves, for uh, the ego. And um, uh, that would be, I think that would be the primary way we can understand uh, the imaginary within um, an orthodox framework. Uh, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. No, I think that was good. And I think uh, I have in my notes here that this juxtaposition of these two ways of comporting oneself in the world, right? The one that you are autonomous subject and the other being you're a relational person. That's the main kind of divide, I think, that or, or the issues that are in dialogue when we put mm -hmm. these two systems together. 
um, Lacan says that the imaginary uh, is hooked onto the real and onto the symbolic. So the imaginary is hooked onto the symbolic. The way I think of the imaginary is kind of the landscape of of the passions, and it's where uh, idol idols manifest, idolatry manifests, and it gets hooked onto the symbolic. The symbolic is our human uh, ma meaning, making sense of the word, bro the world broadly through language and discourse. Right. The imaginary is this, uh, you know, this one of the the three registers that is captivated by the image initially of the self in the mirror. Right. And this, Lacan has something. Uh, this process he calls the mirror stage. And it's not like if there wasn't a mirror around, this process wouldn't happen. It's not an actual function of the mirror, but there is this moment in early childhood where one catches a glimpse of oneself in the mirror and gets a gestalt wholeness understanding of oneself while still being um, divided within oneself through impulses to eat, to go to the bathroom, to cry, right? So there's this, this multiplicity that gets captivated through the imaginary into being a, a self, uh, a whole self, and that is the ego. So the ego manifests itself and the capturing of the image of the person in the mirror stage, right? And it's that that ego that instantiates the melodrama that we find ourselves in in the symbolic order and in the fallen uh, symbolic order. Um, so I think yeah, imaginary it's where the uh, the passions ha like latch on to the biology. It's where the passions latch on to uh, your sense of self in the world. And I think there's a lot to be kind of mined there. Um, but yeah, that's that's. Uh, it's it's pretty straightforward what the imaginary is, right? It's non-linguistic, it's imagistic, and it's powerful, right? And it influences uh, a lot of areas of our, of our life, our kind of uh, holistic understanding of the appearance of ourselves. It's not our actual self. And that causes all this trouble with uh, the symptom that emerges, which the ego is the symptom par excellence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the, the division between the imaginary self or the ego and what you actually are, I guess, the real. I mean, Zizek, I don't think Lacan does this, but Zizek says explicitly that the real is the subject. He says that in... Um, uh, in that in that video, uh, you you actually read it um, in that video you did uh, two years ago on Zizek Lacan the Fall. Um, Zizek identifies the, the real with the subject. I I don't know if Lacan does this, but um, the separation between the subject as the real and the ego, uh, similar to um, or even identical to Lacan's distinction between the subject of the statement and the subject of enunciation. I think that's the uh, that's the terms. Um, there's always some subject which is uh, behind any um, any imaginary conception of yourself, uh, which is the ego. And I think that this this split between what you think you are and what you actually are, this is really the essence of the fall. Uh, this is the this split is what is introduced into the world by the fall. Um, in the preface to Aphasis, I'm I I wrote that the fall was a uh, break of the harmonious hole into disharmonious holes like holes as in like um like you dig a hole because it's like it's it was a fall into self like um a break away from communion and this split i think uh ultimately when you get when you take it to its lo it, its logical conclusion it leads you to hell and the way hell is traditionally defined um at least by um saint maximus i, I think is it is a split an absolute split between between nature and will. We can understand that as objective or the real, and uh, subjective or the ego. So hell is just this this point of absolute split between what you objectively are as communion and what you subjectively, um, in the imaginary, conceive of yourself as, and that's that's the that's the ego, um, and that's why. Um, at least in modern Orthodox theology, in um, uh, Staniloi, in uh, Florensky, the term that is often used to describe the abyss of hell is the ego. Um, so that's that's something I've really focused on. If anyone who's been following my work um, knows that I have uh, really latched on to the Zizekian understanding of the subject and then reinterpreted it as the um, the abyss uh, of hell. It's a not what's actually at the core of us, but it's a potential. It's a potential that we can fall into. And what Zizek is talking about, and Lacan in, this, in a similar way, is this: what they are noticing is um, something that is at the core of the fallen world. What really, what really is the essence of the fall? The essence of the fall is 
is the split. Uh, so I don't know. Do you want to? Do you want to? Uh, do you have anything to say concerning this this idea of the split and the split subject, and uh, even how the symbolic symbolic order itself is divided and split? That's something Lacan talks about. Yeah, I think that's important to to really kind of double click. There is when um, Adam and Eve sinned, when humanity found itself in this uh, in transgressing the one commandment that. Let's say that didn't happen. What would the phenomenology of human experience be like? We would have an, a coherent understanding of ourselves, our sense of self, our self, and our place in the world. Mm -hmm. And Lacan, early in his first and second seminar, he writes about how you know animals have are are well fitted into their environment, right? They have a limited kind of range of capacities, but they're well and coherently fitted in their environment. Human beings are not. There is an impasse. There is something that keeps human beings from being able to uh, to operate in their environment coherently, cogently, and logically. And the result of this is uh, from the fall, which is this alienation from ultimate ra reality, from God, which is the real, right? I would say mm -hmm. God is the real, in a sense. The kingdom is the real, right? And the kingdom influences our world, our world and it seems like a traumatic expression in, in our world because our sensibilities are fallen the way we understand our the world we think we know and we can know things and then we don't and and it, it's it instantiates this this impasse right so this initial mm -hmm. alienation is what um lacan picks up on and the really the real understanding or the kind of the modern understanding of this idea of an ego which sets itself against a world with an unconscious really was inaugurated by uh, descartes right the cogito Right, the Kojita really uh, inaugurated this idea of separate individual self versus a, uh, an exterior world, and that was the kind of birth of the modern understanding of the unconscious. Mm -hmm. Right, I'd say that the the there is a just like there is a logos, right, the fundamental organizing principle of reality of truth of the kingdom, and there is a dark logos. Right, the dark logos is still this organizing principle of truth, but it, in a fallen world, so it's a lower resolution slice. It's an attempt to make sense of the world in a lower resolution than you would in the kingdom. So mm -hmm. we're trying to make sense of the world with our own prideful, you know, knowledge for being in, the, in a fallen sense. And in doing so, we never feel at home. We never feel comfortable in our own skin. We never can build society and relationships that are fulfilling, right? And we end up dying and we lose everything that we own. This causes this, this increase in this uh, anxiety and in, in that's felt in, in the subject. So I think there's a, a, a lot that's, that is inaugurated by this idea of the fall into history right in this alienated split subject that we find in uh in Lacan and you know again from Descartes we have this idea of the cogito of the self the ego right in orthodox christianity we are looking for a person which is a relationship right, right? Mm -hmm. and th there's a an impasse there right the mirror stage is the phenomenology of idol worship in a sense so mm -hmm. that is why it's interesting from an orthodox perspective to look at these ideas cuz it's it's shining a light on a mechanism that is has been pretty much hidden except for you know the 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 eyes and the hearts of the saints that could understand and, and see how idols manifest how uh, the passions interact with the the subject and what that does to one's life and whatnot so that's what we're talking about the most kind of fundamental level right subjectivity is this is emptiness right yeah, lacan says it's the forced choice between meaning and being uh in orthodoxy hypostasis the person is the subject and it's a well-knitted coherent trinity trinitarian expression of the truth right which fits coherently but we um are in a fallen world and we have uh, all of these manifestations to to deal with in our lives personal lives professional lives in the economy and the world as a whole uh and what do we use to to get a foothold lacan again would say that religion and especially catholicism really played a key role covering over the the traumatic expression of the real by this coherent uh coherent system of thought which is christianity which chooses meaning over being right but it ultimately falls short uh, according to lacan because it's still set in the imaginary uh kind of sense so um until there's a really a quilting point between the three registers um i guess that would be one way to make sense of what redemption would look like from this this fallen sense but i don't think that's right because you have you know from an orthodox perspective you have you know purification illumination deification right and in doing these three steps uh, one can find one's way back to the real, to the kingdom, to a sense of coherency, right? Which is uh, is done through a process. And just lastly, it's both of these systems 
um, psychoanalysis, like orthodoxy, both of them have a theory and a praxis that necessarily are wedded together in order to understand the thing, right? Mm -hmm. If we just talk about orthodox theology without orthodox praxis, it's, 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 it's not, um, it doesn't suffice. Same thing. If we talk about Lacanian theory without its, without its practice in the clinical field and the questions that are being addressed there, I think it's important to make that, that kind of consonance as well.